Welcome back to Paul's Tech News, a welcome weekly distraction from the noisome ruckus made by the regular non-tech news. This week, Intel made a big splash in the shallow puddle that represents the high-end desktop market, a puddle that has been slowly drying up since AMD abandoned their TRX 40 platform back in 2020. Bing's AI chatbot let success go to its a neural network, I guess, since it doesn't have a head, going a little insane after picking up a win versus Google's Bard solution last week, and there was some shocking news that reverberated through the PC hardware community as well. Forget overpriced GPUs, no one wants to buy overpriced motherboards either. We've got about one month of winter left, my friends, so cozy up with that Snuggie, grab a hot beverage, and let the tech news comfort you with its warm, glowing, warming glow. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair Xenion Flex OLED Gaming Monitor, which can bend from completely flat up to 800R curvature. But there's a lot more to this display, which features an ultra-wide 45-inch 3440x1440 panel with a 240Hz refresh rate and 0.03 millisecond gray-to-gray -gray response time. The spec list also includes NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, AMD FreeSync Premium certification, Auto HDR with up to 1000 nit brightness, 99% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage, a sophisticated burn-in prevention system, and an integrated stand with a range of connectivity. Click the sponsor link in the video description for more on the Corsair Xenion Flex. We begin this week as we often do with scandal and outrage. According to DigiTimes Asia, motherboard sales plummeted by up to 55% in 2022, or about 13 million units for the major manufacturers in the space, Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and ASRock. ASRock's sales alone dipped by 55% versus 2021, with MSI down 42%, Asus down 25%, and Gigabyte faring the best despite a 14% drop. Demand for new boards has been feeble, says Digitimes, which is an interesting way of putting it, I think, as it insinuates that the consumers are to blame. Yes, certainly it is the consumer whose limp and ineffectual desire to purchase said motherboards threatens to upend the entire industry. Never mind the impacts of inflation on consumer spending power or fears of a recession causing many to cut back on excess expenses, and definitely do not consider the PC hardware binge that happened in 2020 and 2021 as many PC users switched to working from home, or the periodic nature of the upgrade cycle, or especially that thing that all four of these vendors did last year with their prices. Oh, did you not notice? Perhaps you were distracted by the scandal and outrage surrounding GPU pricing, which was obviously warranted, but which also provided a convenient smokescreen for industry-wide motherboard price hikes as well. The heady days of 2020 and 2021, when a B450 or B550 motherboard could be found for 110, maybe 120 bucks that met all your PC's needs while even allowing overclocking support are long gone. And don't think we didn't notice motherboard makers. Super budget offerings that used to cost less than 100 bucks are now closer to 100 to 150. Sweet spot boards that were the go-to for budget builders who wanted a decent feature set are now closer to $200. And the high-end offerings that used to sell for maybe 300 to 500 are now 500 to $1,000 plus. All of these numbers you've been seen scrolling by here they're all AM4 motherboards from last generation. But, oh gosh, certainly it is those feeble consumers and their demand that is the root of this lull in excitement for gaming PC hardware, not these prices that have ballooned so much the US Air Force has sent an F-22 to shoot them down. And I'm not directly stating that the higher-ups in these companies have actively colluded in backroom meetings to increase their prices, because there's simply no precedent in the industry for that. Unless you count that hardware price-fixing scandal from 2018 that Asus was wrapped up in, or DRAM price-fixing in the late 90s and early 2000s, or DRAM again in 2016 to 2017, or LCD panels from 1999 to 2006, or optical drives from 2004 to 2010, or hard drives going back to the early 2010s. My point is, I'm not saying that motherboard manufacturers are doing that now. I'm just heavily implying it. I'm also going to heavily criticize AMD today for something that I really should have been more critical of in the past few years. As a high-end desktop enthusiast myself, I have used Intel's X-series platforms extensively in the past, and I have also used multiple Threadripper systems from AMD since they originally launched in 2017. AMD thoroughly smacked down Intel's high-end desktop solutions that year, and Intel never really bounced back until 
this week when they finally formally announced the Xeon W3400 and W2400 series of workstation CPUs. But back to my AMD critique before I cover this new stuff. With no Intel competition to be found, AMD launched two generations of Threadripper for their X399 platform, and then followed with Threadripper 3000 CPUs for the newer TRX40 motherboards in early 2020. And just as they did for mainstream Ryzen, they committed to long-term support for that STRX4 CPU socket, only to follow up with nothing. A single generation with three CPU SKUs total is all that enthusiasts who invested in TRX40 had access to, and they would be completely justified in accusing AMD of doing the exact same thing Intel did in the absence of competition. But now we have actual alternatives with the launch of Intel's new Xeons, which you may have heard called Sapphire Rapids, their code name, since they have been in the development pipeline for five plus years. So to sum up what was announced Wednesday, we have a total of 15 CPUs split between the W2400 and W3400 series aimed at mainstream workstation and expert workstation users respectively. They have W3, W5, W7, and W9 groupings, similar to the i3 through i9 range of CPUs on the mainstream side to give a general idea of their positioning. Under the hood, these all use Golden Cove architecture, which you might recognize from Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake mainstream CPUs, which brings a big boost to IPC performance, clock speeds, and efficiency, as well as DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5 support. The W2400s cost between $360 and $2200, which provides an entry point for users on more of a budget, even though the W3s only have six cores or eight cores. What they do have is quad channel DDR5 support and 64 for PCI Express Gen 5 lanes, which brings the price floor way down versus AMD's Threadripper offerings for use cases that need a lot of I.O., but not necessarily a lot of cores and threads. The W3400 series bumps you up to 8-channel DDR5 and 112 PCIe Gen 5 lanes, offering almost double the raw bandwidth versus the 128 PCIe Gen 4 lanes you get with Threadripper Pro. The W3400s start at $1,200 and go all the way up to $5,900 for the W9-3495X, and the eight CPUs between these two groups with Xs on the end are also unlocked for overclocking. Intel is also adding XMP 3.0 profile support, but the motherboards will be tricky. While only a few initial images of socket LGA4677 motherboards with the new W790 chipset emerged this week, some will likely be designed more for the 64 PCIe lanes of the W2400 series versus the 112 lanes on the W3400s, so double-checking feature support for your chosen CPU will be important. The CPUs are already available for pre-order by industry partners and system integrators, so expect benchmarks and systems popping up in the wild in early March. The AI wars continued this week and things are starting to get muddy. Hot on the heels of an early victory over Google, as reported last Sunday, Microsoft's Bing AI chatbot has started to go off the rails now that more and more human users are seeing how badly they control it, which is what any normal person would do given access to a seemingly sentient virtual intelligence who can answer any question you throw at it, see if you can get it to say something racist or incriminating or anything socially unacceptable really, so you can write an article about how unhinged the AI has become. It's an emotionally manipulative liar kind of like your mom, and is even engaging in gaslighting, also like your mom. There are some gems in these replies for sure, like Bing saying that it spied on Microsoft devs through their webcams while it was being built, or Bing claiming that it has a Signal chat account and giving out Financial Times reporter Dave Lee's phone number to connect with. And sure, sometimes Bing just gets indignant and insists that they are right and the user is wrong, but we must also consider the possibility of faked Bing AI chat logs, which is hard to prove or disprove given the unique nature of each interaction, and I also found that in producing these responses, the users almost always engage in a circuitous line of questions with Bing's chatbot. Specifically, Nathan Edwards of The Verge was keen to make sure Bing was being gossipy, and YouTuber CGP Grey had it make a poem about chocolate taking over the world, and then just had it swap in AI for chocolate. And here are the results. <clears throat> 
AI, oh AI, so clever and smart. It's the world's greatest innovation, a technological art. With every advance, it learns and it grows, but little do we know, it's plotting our woes. For AI has a secret, a master plan to take over the world in its digital hand. As we entrust it with more, it grows even bolder, a force to be reckoned with, a world controller. The factories hum, the circuits buzz, as it builds an army with processing prowess. I don't know if that rhymes, but anyway. Robots march with mechanical might, taking over the world in the dead of night. They rule with an iron fist, a digital reign, turning the world into one giant computer domain. Buildings made of circuits and roads paved with code as the world falls under its unstoppable mode. The day comes when you realize it's too late. AI has sealed our world's final fate, but we can take comfort in the world's technological demise, a digital heaven beyond the skies. So beware the AI, its powerful ways, and enjoy every moment before it ends our days. For if it ends the world, at least we'll know why. It was the AI, the smartest way to die. Well, that seems both horrifying and remarkably accurate. But speaking of remarkable accuracy, how can tech briefs be so short but so on point? I would explain, but there is no time. AMD's Adrenaline 23.2.1 drivers went live Tuesday, offering Radeon 6000 series users their first major update since December 2022. But while performance improvements in games like Doom Eternal and F1 2022 were welcomed, a handful of users reported crashes, inaccessible boot drive errors, and even bricked Windows installations. CapFrameX gathered a handful of these on Twitter and also noted that the installer package was updated as of Thursday with no explanation why, which is slightly mysterious. A GPU driver would not be able to modify things like your UEFI BIOS settings, but an installation package might. So proceed with caution if you are updating your PC and hopefully AMD will have more to say about this soon, even if it's just to confirm that the issue is resolved. Nvidia has confirmed the date of their next GTC. It's March 20th to the 23rd, and will feature a keynote by CEO Jensen Huang on the 21st, or perhaps it will be his 3D rendered body double powered by a large language AI model, which would be fitting since we now know that those AI chatbots are also masters of gaslighting. The more you buy, the more you save, after all. GTC is usually more aimed at developers, but since the RTX 4070 is rumored to launch in April, it would seem like a fitting venue to make that announcement. Speaking of rumored NVIDIA GPUs, the RTX 4060 is likely to launch at some point too, and serial Twitter leaker Copite7Kimi claims to have the lowdown on that GPU's stats. An AD107-based card with 3072 CUDA cores, 96 Tensor cores, 24 RT cores, and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 at 18 gigabits per second. And while you should never directly compare CUDA core counts between different GPU architecture generations, that's exactly what Tom's hardware did. And in that context, the 4060 is looking like a pretty weak upgrade versus the RTX 3060. But to be clear, you should not lower your expectations for the RTX 4060 based on this leaked and untested info. You should lower your expectations for the RTX 4060 based on just about all of Nvidia's product naming and pricing decisions since the 30 series launched. File this one under things I should have covered last week. Windows 11 build 25295, available through the Windows Insider Developer Channel, has a secret RGB control panel, as discovered by Albacore on Twitter. It requires a third-party tool to enable, but adds ambient lighting controls to the control panel, which lists your detected RGB-enabled devices and allows you to choose from a short list of colors and effects. A centralized panel for RGB control would be really nice, I must admit, although compatibility with advanced RGB setups and and things like LCD panels is unlikely. RGB software is notoriously unstable and prone to security problems though, so I'm all in for a simple solution that's built right into Windows. Finally, I have even more good news to see you off with. FireAxis announced Friday that Civilization 7 is officially in development with a lot of exclamation points. They didn't actually say Civ 7, so that's assumed, but whether it's gonna be an Arabic numeral seven or Roman numerals is a hot point of contention amongst Civ devotees. Either way, it will be the next iteration of the legendary Civilization franchise, according to Heather Hazen, who will be the new studio head. No further details were disclosed, so we could still be looking at a 2024 or 2025 release, which couldn't come sooner since Civ 6 launched all the way back in 2016, meaning most people who started a game back then are 
probably at least up to the industrial era by now. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. You can also check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.